As you may have seen my last video, I have started to kick off a series around attack surface management with a focus on external attack surface management, which all this is a fancy way of saying we're going to do recon series. In this episode, I want to talk about how you can leverage certificate transparency and what certificate transparency is when you are doing your day-to-day -day recon or how you can leverage it to identify assets belonging to a particular company. More than likely web assets because of domains and subdomains, but again, we want to find a way to extend our attack surface and find more and more assets that belong to a company. So hi, my name is Naham Sik, and today I want to talk about search transparency. Certificate transparency or search transparency as I call it, or CT for short, is a framework created to help and allow domain owners to be able to monitor SSL activity that's being issued to their domains. And this was created to help domain owners be able to identify SSL certs, whether they were legitimate, whether they were mistakenly issued, or if they were created maliciously. Before we jump in and talk about how you can use this as a red teamer, bug bounty hunter, or pen tester, we have to understand the main two components of CT and how they work. So the first component is certificate transparency log. How does that work? Well, once a certificate is issued, it takes the data that belongs to the certification and it pins it to the logs. This means that once this data has entered the logs, it cannot be modified or deleted. The second layer is the monitors. These are the people that have access to these logs. They can download them, store them, and allow their users to search through these data uh, using different fields that exist in a certification. So we're gonna talk about what these fields are in each certificate in a little bit in the video, but these are the two main components that come with CT that we need to keep in mind before we jump into the rest of the video. Okay, now let's talk about what these fields are and how you can look for them. So when you look at a certificate, there are a few different fields that comes up. The first bit that I wanna cover is information like the party that the certificate was issued to. These are things like the domain name, which authority issued the SSL certificate itself, the publicly and more. These are all valuable information, but for the sake of this video and in order to keep it under 10 minutes, I'm gonna skip this and jump into the fields that I personally use when I want to enumerate domains and subdomains that belong to an organization. The second set of information are things like the organization name, the email it was issued to, the city, the zip code, address. These are all things that could be, in some cases, very specific to an organization. Again, the city could be very specific in some cases versus some others it could be very common, but the domain name, the organization name, and email are the three things that could be very, very valuable that we can dig through in order to find domains or subdomains that belong to a company. So there are different platforms you can use to pull this data from. You can either use a Google CT, you can use Facebook CT. I think Facebook, if you have it on your phone, every time a new certificate is issued, it will send you a push notification to your phone and tell you, hey, this was uh, newly discovered or changed or whatever it is. We can also use cert.sh, census, and all the other ones. My favorite one to use is crt.sh or cert.sh, which is a completely free resource. You don't have to sign up for anything and they allow you to query for different things like the fields that I mentioned earlier and it also outputs it for you in a JSON format so you can manipulate the entire data and just build on more and more on it, feed it to different tools if you're doing additional recon or information gathering stuff. So for this example, what we're gonna do is we are going to look at yahoo.com. We're gonna click on this little lock button and we're going to go to connection is secure and click on certificate is valid. This will bring up the certification itself. Then we're gonna click on details, and this is where we can see all the information that's very specific in this case for Yahoo. So first of all, Yahoo is one of the only companies that its location is in Sunnyvale. That could be a really good place for us to uh, query a location for the certificate and see what else comes up. Again, just because it's in that city, it doesn't mean that it belongs to Yahoo, but there's a high chance that it could be. We can do some digging and see if that is the case or not. Two, we can see that the organization name itself is Oath.inc, which Yahoo was formerly known as Oath. They changed to Verizon Media, um, and I think some of their domains and assets are still under this name uh, until they're able to change it. And last but not least, there's a common name that you can see is Yahoo.com, and that is the domain that we we're looking at right now. The common name for it is Yahoo.com. And again, there's all the other things that I mentioned earlier. There's the organization that issued this. Um, there is a serial number all this different information, the public key. We're gonna not look at those. The main things that we really wanna take a look at is the city, the organization name, and the common name. We can query for all of these by going to cert.sh.
And if we click on advanced, it brings up all these different fields that we can actually search for. So example, if we're looking at the organization name, in this case was Oath Inc. And we search for it, it's gonna give us every single domain that's been issued a certificate that has the Oath Inc. company as the organization name. So once we look for the organization set as Oath, we can do Oath, we can do Oath Inc. Either one would work. It would give you whatever one has the keyword Oath in it. And what it's gonna do here is telling us every domain based on the time that it was logged at. You can see this was logged on June 2nd of 2020. We can see that is ouroath.com. Uh, AOL used to be a part of the same company. I'm not sure if it is still, but this domain was also, or this subdomain was actually also uh, given that certification under Oath Inc. There's some yahoo.com, there's oath.cloud, and the list continues. So as you can see, there are a lot of assets we can use based on this list to expand our attack surface and find more and more assets that belong to this company. If we're doing a bug bounty, red team, whatever activities that we're doing, it gives us a lot of different ground to cover and a lot of different things to look at when it comes down to identifying assets uh, or doing an external attack surface management kind of an engagement. So for example, if we now know that our oath.com is a domain that belongs to uh, this company, what we can do is we can actually search through the common name by giving it uh, our oath and we can tell it to give us every single subdomain under our oath.com which will give us exactly everything that's under that domain all the subdomains of it and again it'll be a list like this but it won't be other domains and it's going to be specifically to our oath.com itself so now that we know our oath belongs to yahoo or oath what we can do is we can use our oath.com and use a common field actually to query for every subdomain under our oath and get a list of all of them here uh, to kind of just identify assets that belong to that domain particularly. And of course, you can go on and do a location, do other fields and identify more. Maybe some of the domains are an issue to our Oath uh, or Oath Inc. It could be issued to another company. You can do location maybe and see if anything else comes up. So let's think about this a little bit more. If you can use the organization name, you can get a list of all the domain that belongs to an organization. In this case, if you're hacking on Yahoo, Apple, Google, uh, Meta or Facebook, that is a really good way of getting a list of all the domains, especially if you know how to use Bash and Python to manipulate the text and use the output equals JSON format on Sage. You can get a really good list of all the domains that they own. And then you can actually write another script that takes all those domains and searches through the common name field and get a list of subdomains that belongs to each of those domain names. And then now you go from 50 domains to finding subdomains for every single one of those 50 domains and then you have a giant list of different assets that belong to a company. So why is all this important? Well, if you are doing a red team or a bug bounty engagement, well, it is really important to be able to find as many assets as you can. You wanna do port scan, information gathering, grab titles, maybe, maybe look for known CVEs. And let's just be clear, this doesn't give you 100% of a coverage for a particular organization. And let's just be real, if an asset is important and it's taking username and passwords or some PIIs, then the organization is going to issue a cert for that particular subdomain or that particular asset. And even though it doesn't give you 100% coverage, but it still gives you a list of all the different domains. And on top of that, a research like this, if you're doing a red team, again, bug bounty, whatever the reasoning is, it really helps you identify some of the different patterns that a company uses. What are the corporate sites? Is it a corporate domain? Is it a supplement like corp.yahoo.com or is it ouroath.com? Would they use some other internal stuff on there versus corp.yahoo.com? Where do they put the dev sites? Where do the internal sites go? This is a really good place to give you an insight on how a company creates different names and different permutations and environments in order to serve their apps to either their users or their internal company users and employees. All right, before you go and try these on, on your bug bounty programs on your own company, uh, do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and also let me know in the comments if you want me to show you how you can actually automate every different step of this process that I mentioned by using organization and the CN or the common name fields to get a list of all the domains and then get all the subdomains just purely by using search.sh uh, for another video. So let me know in the comments what you think and we'll see if we can make a video out of it maybe later down the road as a part of the recon series and this is not to say that there aren't tools that already do this 
I personally, I'm a big fan of these tools. There are a ton of tools that do this, but I also need to understand how do these tools work? What sources do they use? How are these sources gathering this different information and be able to do it on my own? Sometimes you may be able to tweak them better. You may be able to get these different domain names and be able to manipulate them using Bash and Python to add more and more assets or permutations or different environments to identify assets that these tools may have not been able to identify. All right, did I do this in 10 minutes? Who knows, but come back in a few weeks. I'm going to another episode on attack surface management or recon, uh, episode three. We're going to talk about Shodan, but also let me know in the comments if there's a different platform or a particular data set you want me to cover in one of my upcoming videos. Until the next video, peace. See you guys next time.